Hello, today I'm tie dyeing with some natural colours using the plant dyes Madder, Indigo and Weld to create a kaleidoscope effect with a fun squenching technique. Hey, it's Kaylee from Billy New. Uh, today I am going to be starting the process of dyeing my new collection. Um, I have an idea in my head and I like to roll with my ideas, so I'm going to be squench dyeing some of the products, uh, some of the garments that I've already made, and starting the process, I'm going to be using Madder. Before I start, I'd just like to remind you to like and subscribe and comment, and if you want to check out any of the garments that I make, you can head over to my website, billynew.com, and you can follow me on Instagram, at billynewapparel. I'd also just like to mention that this summer, June 2024, me and a couple of my crazy creative friends are hosting a floral retreat in Provence. So more details of that will be coming soon on my website, but I just wanted to mention it now in case it tickles your fancy. Chubby. Can you not break that please? So I've been soaking my madder for a few hours in some hot water. Madder is one of my absolute favourite dyes to dye with. So that's why I'm starting the process today with that. I'm just adding more water so my fibres will have some more space. Thank you to move around in. Did you break it? Yeah. So I have a big pile of pre-mordanted um, textiles here. Some garments are the garments for my next collection, like I've got this wrap top, um, linen shorts, some wide leg pants. I've also got some vintage French um, 90s and blouses with really pretty lace on them. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using a really simple um, kind of tie-dye technique and I'm going to be just grabbing each garment and I'm going to simply just scrunch it up like this and I'm going to secure it in place um, with some string. Each of these garments are going to end up oop, in a little ball like this. Some of them I'll tie tighter and some of them I'll tie looser just for some varying effects. There's one bundle. So I really like this technique because it's I'm not aiming for um, a unified colour on the whole piece so it means it's a little bit easier in terms of kind of time and precision, I'm really aiming for some kind of mottled effects, like tie-dye effects. And it also means that I can fit quite a few pieces into one dye pot, whereas if I was aiming for a unified effect, unified like colour, then I probably only have one piece in a dye pot at a time. So it's much more time consuming to do that. That also means it's a bit like bundle dyeing, where you're using, end up using less um, resources like water and heat. With this technique also, sometimes you can squench the fabric while it's wet, and sometimes what I'm doing today is I'm scrunching it while it's dry, because when it's wet, you'll get more of the colour and liquid going into the creases more easily but when it's dry it will mean that there's a bit more contrast so the colour and the, the dye liquid won't kind of go as deep into all the cracks and creases which is kind of what the effect that I want. So also I'm using string here 
but another cool way of doing this technique is kind of getting a nut milk bag or maybe some nylon granny tights or something that you can put your um, piece of fabric into and twist really tight so it, you won't get any of the string marks but for these I'm not really bothered about having string marks in fact I quite like them but if I didn't want any string marks I would definitely use a kind of pair of tights or something like that for a nut milk bag. So you can see I've got quite a lot of bundles here of um, I'm not sure all of these are actually going to fit in the die pot but I hope so um, and the idea and goal is that some of those will be staying pink some of them I'm going to re-scrunch and put into a different colour um, maybe once or twice maybe two different colours so I'm aiming for like some layered um, multicolour patterns on these um, as usual when I'm dyeing I kind of just go with what feels right in the moment so I'm not sure exactly which ones are going to be which colours but um, that is how I like to dye. I like to have a surprise. So sometimes when I find these like beautiful vintage shirts and nightgowns and stuff I do actually find it quite difficult to decide um, or take the step to dyeing them like often they'll just hang around in my studio for quite a long time because I really appreciate them white um, and I appreciate the kind of work that's gone into them and sometimes I'm not sure if dyeing them is the right thing to do um, so it takes me a while to decide um, obviously these ones I've decided <laughs> but I just wanted to say that there's something about the craftsmanship and the quality of the, the work that's gone into these that makes me take a bit of time you know into deciding whether I want to dye them or not having some respect for for the ancient times so it's time to put my bundles into the madder bath so madder is um, a dye that's traditionally used to kind of achieve reds but I love it personally for its pinks um, so that's what I'm aiming for today I'm using a madder extract and it has a really kind of distinct sweet smell to it definitely wouldn't be able to fit any more in there so I think I made the right choice about saving some for a different bath. So because I'm not aiming for a, um, a solid colour it's quite cool I don't have to stir it all the time and I can just leave this overnight to soak up all the colour.
So I've got my bundles here. I'm going to unwrap them in a second. Um, not sure what the effect's going to be like because I didn't wrap them too tight and I left them in all night. So there might not be too much contrast, but we'll see. Ready? <laughs> hey, come back. You want to do it as well? Okay. Can you see that I tried to do it, so you just need to pull one of these and it'll come undone. Do you want to do one, Shade? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's too big and it's wet, darling. So this is going to be really hard to decide. Like, I think I'm going to keep this one like this, but I love the textures and I'm imagining another colour on top of there will go really nicely on that might give myself a little bit of time to think about this as well with this wrap top I think that the the dies come out really nicely but I'm gonna go with another color on that I think and another color on the shorts and the trousers I might just keep this pink as well. Yeah, I'm going to keep this one pink. Cute. It's quite delicate, this lace. Well, that's... So, Weld is another dye that I want to use for um, layering on my scrunch. Um, Scrunchy garments. This weld is from the Mazi Natural Dyes, and I'm just gonna kind of put a big chunk of that in here. It's a bit dusty, you might want to wear a mask if you're doing this. my pot up with water and I'm going to let this soak overnight. So I've just filled my pot with hot water and now I'm going to let this soak overnight um, just to kind of maximise the colour release. just bought this pot in from outside and it's been outside all winter. Um, I'm going to try and wake it up. It's an indigo vat, an iron indigo vat, but um, I don't know if it's going to work. So I'm just going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a good stir and I'm going to put it on a heat, a gentle heat, um, see if I can wake it up and I'll try and dye something a little bit later. Um, and test the pH and maybe feed it with some more iron and if it's dying it'd be very cool if it is um, I'll use it until I haven't got any more indigo left so I'm just going to give this a really good stir like I said it's been outside all winter so I've got my little pile of things to dye. Um, I'm going to dunk some of these in the indigo. second. If 
I've only got one glove, so <laughs> it's a bit awkward. I'm just going to dunk half of this in, I think. I'm going to do half of this one as well. Ready? Seems like there's still loads of indigo. I can't believe I've managed to wake this indigo that up after a whole winter not using it. This one, yeah, why not? Open these now and then I'll go and give them another rinse like a quick rinse spin in the washing machine that's the good thing about indigo it's really quick These ones. I was really hoping for some purpley vibes. I think we got it. Oh, yes. So that's the final step for today and tomorrow I'm going to use the weld and scrunch again and get some yellow on these. 
So if you can imagine, I'm hoping that this will go a bit green and yellow as well. I love these. So I've already done pink and blue. Now I'm going to do yellow. Some of them are just blue, so I'm hoping that these will kind of go a little bit green. Um, and these maybe orange and green as well. But we'll see, it's always a surprise. These are dry um, from the last couple of days of dyeing. They haven't been washed yet, so they're a little bit stiff. And they will be until I do their final rinse and wash. But you can see this is exactly the kind of patterns I was going for. I was kind of inspired by my kids' dirty um, paint towel <laughs> with loads of like colours smushed into it. And that was where I'm going with this, if you can imagine. It's like a stocking, <laughs> like a Christmas stocking. Never done this many in one go before. That nice, tight, scrunched. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So it's not the most beautiful looking dye pot but I assure you that there's lots of lovely yellow in there. Um, I actually scrunched these up in the tights because I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's a really small dye pot and all my other big ones are taken so I'm going to, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit them all in here but we'll see. One, maybe Ooh, I don't. Oh, it's all sludging out the top. I do want to kind of keep it in, so. This is really pushing it to the limits of space. Oh, I'm going to leave that like that. Right, I'm going to leave these for a good while now to soak up the dye. Hopefully we'll have some green. Some green bits. So today I am unbundling these. So if, well we'll see what they look like first. But I've got a feeling quite green. Oh yeah, it's more green than I was thinking. I think that the the um, tights were kind of blocking the colour a bit. Hello, what's this? This is a wrap top. Oh yeah, that's what, that's what I was kind of hoping for. Some greeny, yellowy, See that? Well, I'm feeling a bit relieved to be honest because I thought that I wasn't going to have a very nice result, but actually I love it. Let's have a look. This is the shorts I wanted to see. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. I'm, yeah, we'll see. They're going to look different when they're dry as well but you can see where the blue, blue and yellow have overlaid each other. It's kind of gone green. Um, now let's try the pinky ones. Hmm. He's not so much green. 
a little bit there. Let's see, this one might be a bit greener. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, can you see up in the light? That's the kind of effect I was hoping for. A bit kaleidoscopy. Oh, I like that a lot. It's kind of like some kind of dinosaur egg. I'm gonna crack it open. Oh yeah. Hey. See, it's gone really green there. Yes. Happy. It's really orange there where the yellow and pink overlaid. And then the other side's more green. I love that. Love it. Oh, this is one of the vintage nighties. Yay, oh my god, I love that so much. That's exactly yummy. These are obviously wet right now. <laughs> so we'll get them dry and the colours will be slightly lighter, but really lush. And a sneaky one that I forgot. Yay. One of the things I love about the vintage stuff is there's always like people's initials. <laughs> I just love it. It's like a reminder of their past life. Beautiful. To see these garments in their final glory, you'll have to head to my website billynew.com and keep an eye out for my spring drop. You can also subscribe to my mailing list to be notified of all future drops and really new updates. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe as that really helps us grow our channel and helps us um, make these videos for you guys to enjoy. <laughs>